Washington, Back Alley Nightclub, yes. Kevin Staley from Motor Breath, America's loudest tribute to Metallica, hey. talking about his gear, the setup, and uh, basically uh, what he does need, doesn't need, what he likes, what he'd like to have, <laughs> and uh, what it takes to be the front man for Metallica. Oh yeah! Yeah! <laughs> intermediate, beginner, whatever, and you're looking for a really good high gain amp, I'm going to tell you right now, bang for buck right there. The Bagheera 333XL gives you all you want and more. I have my game backed off because this thing is such a beast. Um, two bands. It's two bands, yes. It's got four uh, 12AX7s in it, and mine's loaded right now with uh, four uh, EL34s, which is nice and crunchy and bitey. Um, it's kind of a, it's such a high gain amp, I've got my presence pulled way back. It's got independent volumes and masters, it's got a clean channel, all you need over there. Effects loop. Effects loop in the back, which I run a few things over here in, um, we want to go into that. Bottom line, you want PV triple X for a cheaper price, get this. Then we go to the rack. Said, uh, I got effects loop, so I'm running the 362 Sonic Maximizer, which is this bad boy right here. That opens your sound up. A lot of people say you can do that with an EQ. Huh. Go ahead, try. Um, this thing is the baddest thing I've ever put on my rig, bottom line. Um, we'll go into that in a sec. The other thing that I have running through my effects loop is the Lexicon MX400 right here. Um, don't use a lot of channels on it. It's basically used for solos and uh, the clean channel. Make it all warm and fuzzy. Running through the effects loop also. I've got a Behringer rack tuner, which I could have paid $100 more for the core. It's got an input in the front if you're not working wireless. It's got two inputs in the back. It's got the in and out. It's really clean going to all my other stuff. And then I've got the uh, Monster Power power conditioner that basically every single thing that I have up here plugs into that one cord out for power, which is really convenient when you're gigging because one cord out, boom, you click this switch, everything comes on. Protect your electronics. Absolutely. It's going to give. It's going to make sure that you have conditioned power to everything that he's using here, which is important, especially when you're talking about tubes. Exactly. Stuff like that. You want the same constant power the whole time so that it doesn't draw power from anything. Your amp gets everything it needs. Your effects give everything it needs. Another thing I have running through my uh, effects loop is the Rocktron Hush, which if you're ever stopping, you play, you stop, and you get this. Does a really good job. I like the rack mount version, but I don't have it right now. But this works. Now, what about that versus the noise gate that's built in? <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I have mine set at uh, five, twelve o'clock straight up because it does take a little bit out. But you definitely want an independent, an independent hush on there. If not this, and you got the cash, get a decimator. Is that thing rule? And I've got my baby over here. It's the Line Six. I just bought it. If you're gigging. Use one because I guarantee you, when you're gigging, it gives you independent freedom, quietest noise, no, noiseless wireless I've ever used. Plus, it's got an emulator on here for a 15-foot cable and a 30-foot cable, which actually almost makes your guitar sound like your cord. Bottom cabinet, uh, it's the Randall XL high-end version, really cool. Two vintage 3012s on the top and one 15-inch eminence on the bottom. That's with no effects on it at all. I'm going to give you a, a sample of what the Sonic Maximizer is.
time. What things would you do differently? Moved this from up here down to here. Just a tone, uh, volume and a tone knob. EMG 8581 this combo. Zach Wild combo. Zach Wild combo, but instead of doing what they do, usually I reverse them because it sounds so much better. Um, did a lot to this guitar to make it what it is, and I think it sounds pretty damn good. Another thing is they put their their uh, their peg up here for your strap, and what was happening is it would go down like this every time we took the hands off. So what I did was looked at a real Gibson and actually put it on the back here. L um, little little things that make the differences from Gibson. Now the guitar fun. stays wherever I have it, which is cool. So if you ever buy an Epi, don't do this, do that. Plus strap locks. A must. You always want it. Nothing worse than going out and playing a gig and uh, your guitar falls off. If you're a heavy playing guitar player, kind of like Zach, James Hatfield, and those guys, what are you using for strings? Gauges of strings? What two? Okay, you go with your 11s? Yeah, this is 11 to uh, 50? 50, 52. 52. 52, okay. 52, yeah. That's pretty heavy. Yeah, but you get more, I don't know, you just get more bottom end and uh, more sound. It's fuller. More each sound note. fuller, yeah, and it makes you grab a note and you, have you to can play. really feel it. And I mean, you gotta I play it. Right. When you're Any advice for someone, 13, 14 year old kid just starting out, 20 year old guy? And he's gonna go buy some gear, and he wants to be able to get them sounds he hears on his CDs and his, you know, his iPod and such. But doesn't need even to go to this extent. What would you recommend <laughs> as a nice practice amp? Line six Spider 212 with programmable goodies. Line six. Perfect for a beginning guitar player. Plus, if you actually start a band, get a gig and have a sound guy, the thing can be mic, and it's the most incredible sound that I've ever heard out of a small amp. It will give you a sound that will make you want to play. Now, what, give you everything you need to. What about bringing that into a situation with, say, a drummer like Rich in, a, in an amp -a giant bass amp in a big Mesa Boogie rig? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like what I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work. That's going to make you actually go out and get something bigger because you have to keep up with the guys that you're playing. I think for the, the money, Line 6 is a great one. And, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, Rollin' Cube Amps. <laughs> That's uh, amazing. Another He's little. actually got one of those, and I couldn't believe the sound. We brought it over to practice with, and I have batteries in it. Didn't even plug in the wall, and I'm just tearing it up. And he's like, dude, really? It is amps like this big. Wow, it was cool. It, it's it was insane. Cool. So there, there's, there's a lot of stuff, but, you know, Rollin' Cube Amp, Line 6, though, is going to give you more of the ability to actually gig with it or practice with a band. So, Rollin' Cube Amp, great little practice amp, take it to the parks, it uses batteries, you can play for the pigeons or whatever. And I'll take a guitar that fits your fingers, your hands, whatever, wherever, you know, whatever feels good to you. It doesn't matter if it's ugly, because you can always fix that. I've, you know I've, I've noticed, so you got some big mitts, Zach's got big hands, you know, George oh. Lynch, there's a, there's a tonal difference, a timber difference between the scale lengths, too. Sure. And I think you guys get the squeals and the heavier, chuggy sound. Right, but you know, the whole, the whole thing is, is I've always played basically the same scale, so I'm used to that. Right. You know, my fingers know where to go. Right. Where I've always stayed tried and true to a thinner neck, maybe it's a little fatter back here. Right. But I know over the years of playing, I could be out here jamming and singing and everything, and I know where I've got to be to hit a note. I hate to change so if somebody so. would have taken you and shown you at the beginning that it might have made your career a little bit easier, maybe. Yeah, sure. No, I, I mean, if somebody would have taken me out and said, here, I, I know what you're looking for, try this or try that, I'd have been probably a lot further along as a musician, a guitar player personally, that I'd like to be. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I would recommend, you know, listening to everything that everybody's telling you in these, this series of videos because it's a wealth of information that's going to go a long way for you. Thank you very much. And uh, you do what you do. We're going to go have a couple drinks, kick back, and uh, we'll check the band out. Good luck tonight. Have some fun. Rock on. Take <laughs> <Tickets. laughs>